Good morning, it's her name, DFTBA. Today is Wednesday. <sighs> yes. First off, I want to thank everybody for the positive feedback that we received on the last vlog. Although the fruit punch was a little staining on my favorite Hot 97.5 t-shirt, it was well worth it. Anyway, last time I talked about this man. The Rat King. The Rat King was one of the show's oddest villains, but really one of the more realistic ones. I mean, the complexity of moving underground with nothing but a couple strips of cloth covering your entire body is not that unreachable of a goal. Although to all you kids out there, it is not the smartest life decision. I mean, the Rat King was always fighting with the rats for pizza, and come to think of it, they weren't very good henchmen. I would know. Obviously not the Rat King. Aside from being a hilariously pathetic pile of a villain, Rat King really has a much darker meaning. This category of research is known as cryptozoology, which by definition is the search for and study of animals whose existence or survival is disputed or unsustained, such as the Loch Ness Monster and the Yeti. Obviously we know the Yeti does exist, John Green reference. Let me put it this way. The study of things that may exist. The Rat King is one of those things that may exist. The Rat King is not a fat rat with a crown like you're thinking. At least I was thinking that. It consists of groups of rats with their tails tied together, although it has never been observed live. There are around 45 cases of Rat King reported from the 1800s all the way up to the early 1900s. Although casings of Rat King, like the one found in a fireplace in 1828, seem to be real, most researchers consider those kind of things a hoax, set up completely fake, like crop circles. Only the mummified remains are left to tell the story. So the question remains, is the Rat King real? First, it is important to understand what kind of rat performs a Rat King. Most reported cases have come from the species of rat known as the Black Rat, or as they are known here in Vegas, the Roof Rat. If we open up our history of the world of nasty infesting creatures that coexist with the human species by Dr. Alan Grant, oh, here it is. We see that most cases of Rat King do occur within the Black Rat species. Well, that answers it. Also, most cases were reported in either Europe or Germany, which at one time, black rats were very abundant, but as of now, they are completely gone, almost completely gone. Replaced by the brown rat in Europe and Germany, black rat now lives mainly in North America. They were transferred by ship and they spread like a disease. Oh yeah. Which is kind of funny because if you were to find a black rat on a ship, it is now called a ship rat. But if you see a black rat on your roof, it is now called a roof rat. It's not confusing, just call it like you see it. Speaking of roof rats, take a look at this clip from our first rat drive of the year. We are in this customer's attic today because there is rat droppings and signs of rat or small rat that could be mice. We're going to be baiting and setting snap traps along the inside of these cavity cells above this hard lid in this attic. Right here is the drop down to the kitchen. This is a one story house. Right here there's two drop downs, one on each side of the middle section of the house. This is where the rats love it the most. It's right underneath the insulation and the closest place to food. We're still looking right now where we can find entry points. I am going to be making my way to the garage section, which they do not have an attic entry point to. I'm going to have to crawl through all that, like back in the old days, and see what I can find. I'll let you guys know. In this particular job, it didn't take us very long to figure out these rats' daily lives. The entry into the house was through what is called a louver, basically a cover over exhaust holes that carry hot air. Once inside, the construction of their nest begins with a little insulation for warmth and comfort, and some nice dates from a date palm to feed the nest. As you can see by the size of feces, this identification wasn't hard at all. So once we identified the cheese eating rat buggers, we move on to baiting and trapping with eight Victor rat traps. And if you checked out my last video, you can see exactly how you safely set a victor rat trap. As you see by size of spring, this trap is ready to catch fat rat. Link in the link box below and an annotation somewhere over here. Before I go very quickly, I wanted to share with you the secret weapon of the day. And this time it is the dating game with moths. So what's funny about the dating game with moths is that moths carry what's known as PA, which is basically a defensive toxin that they release from joints of their body when they're in trouble. A female, when she is giving birth, she obviously needs more of that PA to 
protect Oliver Young. And when she is finding a mate, she makes sure that she finds a mate with a lot of PA in his body. So a mate with high PA. A female moth will spend quite some time looking for the right male before she decides on who she will mate with. She wants somebody strong, somebody, you know, physically built and with a lot of PA. So she's kind of going around. So the female moth goes around and she will go around, around, around up to 20 times. She will mate with a moth until she finds that right one, well, she actually will let her eggs get fertilized, thus having enough PA. But the funny thing about it all is, those 20 partners she did have, she collected all that PA. So the more she has sex, the more PA she gets. Isn't moth dating crazy? Now let's answer last vlog's question of the day. Do rats have their own island? The answer, yes. A part of the Aleutian Islands, Rat Island is home to an overwhelming population of brown rats. It is said that the rats were introduced to the island because of a Japanese shipwreck offshore. Once the ship went under, the rats swam their way to shore and began populating the island with no predators to worry about, although I'm sure there were predators. Because of their outside presence and their non-nativity to the island, they have to eat whatever they can find, and that is the eggs of endangered seabird species on the island. Save the whales, save those snails, but can we save the seabirds? We can try. Insert name. I will see you on Friday. Question of the day. History of the world of nasty infesting creatures that coexist with the human species. By Dr. Alan Grant.